Well, how are you feeling, Caleb? Feeling pretty good. How about yourself? Good. Thank you for coming to my podcast. Awesome. Glad to be here. This is... I love podcasting. Yeah? Why is that? Uh, well, depending on the podcast I'm on, I just say whatever pops in my head. Mm -hmm. Say a lot of out-of-pocket stuff. But, you know, it all depends. And here we're at Orlando Duncan. Yeah. You've been in Orlando for a while? About three years. And you've been doing comedy also for three years? Yeah. Actually, no, I've been in Orlando for two years. Mm. The first year of comedy, I was living in Davenport, mm. and I would drive back and forth every day for mics. Wow. That got annoying. That's, that's a lot of dedication for comedy. Yeah. There wasn't any scene in Davenport. No, nah, there's not. Um, I didn't notice at the time, but mm. Winter Haven does have a mic. Yeah. Lakeland has a few mics. Yeah. But driving to Orlando is always the best thing to do. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. What other comedy scene you went? Oh. Besides Orlando. Uh, Tampa. Right. Uh, Tampa, Polk County, which is Lakeland, Winter Haven. Mm -hmm. um, I went up to Virginia last two years ago. That was uh, one of my friends produced a show. Mm -hmm. So we went up there for four days. Great show, but uh, it shouldn't have been that long. Yeah? Yeah, the show was on a Friday night. Yeah. And we left Sunday because mm -hmm. I was a uh, shout out to Cam. I was mm -hmm. with Cam Patterson, mm -hmm. and me and him were in the hotel room like, bro, we could have been back in Orlando. We could have done two more shows in Orlando, but right. we were kind of we stuck because our our flight was Sunday. So Right. But that was actually a great time. I haven't done other states yet, but I love the style of your comedy, how, how you tell things. It's just like kind of slow and then kind of hit, you know? Yeah, you, you know, I posted your video on uh, Chinese TikTok, and... The first one it posted, it instantly got 10,000 views. And Damn. it's got 100 likes and 100 shares. So um, you talked a lot of stuff about anime and like Asian culture. Is that a big influence in your life? Uh, kind of, because when I was a kid, I, uh, I started watching, uh, in it, like, you probably know, I don't know if you know about it or not, but uh, after Cartoon Network, it's, mm. which is a, you know, a cartoon channel in America, they would play Toonami, which mm. was like a more adult, and then they'd play Adult Swim, which was like all the raunchy comedy, uh, not comedy, but uh, kind of like comedy shows like Family Guy, American Dad, but Toonami would show anime. Mm. And the reason it was after Cartoon Network is because like anime is more violent, and they would like be like, oh, they call each other bastard and say damn it, and stuff like that. So like, I remember watching Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, yo, this is dope, like. These guys are actually, like, throwing hands, and it looks like they know what they're doing. All right. Versus, like, cartoons when they fight. It's just cartoony. Mm, that's right. So, uh, with Dragon Ball Z, and then I then I fell in love with Naruto, and mm. I didn't even know that was anime. Yeah. I didn't know what it was, and when I rediscovered anime in 2016, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, this is the best shit ever. Yeah. Like, I love the story. I love the emotion. I love the fights. And then uh, that kind of got me interested in Japanese culture. And, and I know, yeah, really, really Japanese and certain things I like. My ADHD brain will YouTube, but that's about it. Do you speak any of it? You try no. to? No? No, I barely speak English. <laughs> Stop. I barely speak English. It's Where are you from? Here. Well, not here, but Florida. You, uh, you born in which city? Vero Beach. Okay, not far. It's, uh, we're known for fishing and rich people. Right. That's about it. A lot of rich people live in my county. And that, that's uh, your, your parents, rich parents? No, no. Then why? It's, it's weird, like in Vero, if you live on the barrier islands, like on the beach, mm -hmm. you have money. Mm -hmm. But if you live inland, like, like if you don't cross that bridge, right, right, exactly. You're you're basically like middle class or lower middle class, mm -hmm. and then there's areas that are poor. Mm. So I was talking to one of my best friends who I grew up with, mm. and like 
our con he thought I was saying we grew up poor, and I was like, no, no, we grew up lower middle class. He was like, man, we grew up great. And I'm like, no, we did. But, like, for our birthdays, we get one video game, and we'd be excited, like, oh, man, we got a video game. Mm. Whereas, like, I had friends in high school, on their birthday, they got trucks. What? And boats, I'm for real. Boats? Seriously. A girl I was friends with for, from eighth grade through high school, she, I was playing basketball, and her and her boyfriend showed up to, to the court. His, her boyfriend played basketball, and I was talking to him because he had a brand new Ford pickup truck. And he was like, oh, yeah, my dad got this for me like two weeks ago. It was my birthday. I was like, what? <laughs> he bought you a what? <laughs> that $42,000 truck that's Holy yours? Holy shit. Oh, my. Mm. So it's a different, it's, it, it's levels of everything. My childhood was great. I never went hungry. Right, that's true. Well, as long as you feel happy. And it, so at what stage of your life you develop that kind of sense of humor, you think? Uh, I can't really pinpoint it. I want to say around high school. Mm-hmm. Because uh, what's funny is my mom like we're really close mm. so she's very hard for me to like like i like to mess with her like i'll say wild things to her yeah with a straight face yeah to see if she believes me and most of the time <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> right. so i always got to go a step further and further oh, yeah hmm. and i have to keep a straight face and sometimes i'll get them <laughs> my grandma my granddad my auntie my right. uh, uh my uncle mm. the ones that, they know me so mm. well Mm. I always got to up the bar and say wild stuff with a straight face. Mm. And because if I don't sell it, they won't believe me and they know I'm just playing. So you're saying it's a way of you trying to impress your mom and other family member with your sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I was energetic about it, yeah, they would be if I was energetic about it, yeah. they would be like, Oh, he's joking. But if I said it in a deadpan, straight face, looked him in the eye and was just, they'd be like, oh, he's serious. <laughs> and then I'd be like, ah, I got you. And okay. What is the moment that you like really got them? What kind of, which joke? Um, I, rem I remember I tricked my mom for like at least four seconds into thinking that I really sold crack in school. <laughs> like she really, for like, I saw in her face the anger for four seconds she really believed that i sold crack in school and then she it clicked in her brain she was like oh this is he's a he's a fucker he's he's joking so but, what what have you sold oh just weed <laughs> right. but i was a terrible weed dealer because the rule to selling drugs oh yeah is don't get high on your own supply <laughs> right. so i would have all this weed and i'd be like <laughs> Nah, I'll just sell enough to. And I just end up smoking it all and just paying the guy back. He like, you need more. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that again. Broke the main rule. Uh, tell us when did you first time decide to go on a stage, try an open mic? Oh, that was fun. Oh yeah. Um. It's a. It's kind. It's not an interesting story, but mm. I broke my ankle. Hmm. And while I was laid up at my mom's house, because I couldn't do nothing, mm. it kind of made it kind of made me really say, when my when I can walk again, mm. good, I'm mm. going to a I'm going to an open mic. Mm. And I was listening to Joe Rogan, mm. and I don't I always got to say this I don't agree with everything he says. Mm. The period of time I was listening to Joe Rogan was mm. great because mm. I learned a lot from all the guests he had on. Mm -hmm. But uh. He was telling, he was, there was one podcast where he was talking to a fellow comedian about mm. bombing. Mm. And for some reason, I was like, that doesn't sound that bad. Because mm -hmm. he was still getting paid. He was still getting his name out there. But I was like, man, mm. if he could do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I went into my first mic uh, expecting to bomb. Right. I got two laughs. Mm. And I was like, that was terrible. Mm. And I went back <laughs> for, the, for four weeks mm. every Thursday. Mm. And then I discovered the open mic comedy scene mm. after that it was every every day mm. every single day like it was i remember my uncle had a birthday 
and we we sat ate dinner we ate we finished dinner putting the plates away mm -hmm. and i was like all right i'm going to a mic and they're like you're you're not going and i was like we just ate dinner i gotta go to a mic i don't mm -hmm. want to watch a movie mm -hmm. if we were out and about yeah that's a different yeah. story yeah i wouldn't leave the family but we just ate dinner at the house right i'm leaving this mm -hmm. covid like covid just ended i'm leaving i'm mm -hmm. out of here and uh i'll add this in i uh Six weeks in the comedy, I did a competition at Grumpy's, mm. and I won. I won twenty five bucks. Nice. And uh, I remember, because mm. I was very depressed at the time. I remember mm. when I got the money and they yeah. told me I won. Yeah. I didn't believe it. I was like, "This isn't real. Like, yeah. I don't win nothing." Mm -hmm. And then uh, that just made me like really like, yeah, I'm doing comedy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. We're, we're missing the place where you went the first time. Where is it? Oh, Beaumont. It's not open now. It's downtown on Magnolia Street, Magnolia mm. and Central. Okay. If anybody's ever in downtown, that's a great area to get drunk and see pretty women. Um, but no, the, the bar shut down because they had plumbing issues. Mm. But when I tell you this was like, we call it a kill box mm. because the roof was short. Mm. I'm five nine. If I stretched my hand up, I could touch the roof. That's like kind of like grumpy. It's just like short and. Oh, it was so low to the ground, and they would shove as many people as you can. It was upstairs, so it was mm. like a little tiny. They had like a little bar section. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It was. Oh my god. Where did you find that? Someone told you, or you found online? Yeah, I hit up. Uh, shout out to him. I hit up Car Carmen Valone on on Facebook. I said, Hey, uh -huh. I want to do comedy. He said, Come out to Beaumont. Mm. And that's when I learned the brutal world of comedy because I signed up at seven o'clock on the dot. Mm. I didn't get on stage till eleven thirty. What? Yeah. Is it that busy back then? <laughs> yeah, it was. It, wow. He would show me the paper. Whoa. And I would get mad because my name would be up here, and he'd have everybody else crossed off and be like, "Okay, you're next." And I'm like, "But now I, that I I've did been the same. It, yeah, I, I did the I same it. last Tuesday. I was there six thirty. I didn't get on till like ten. Yeah, I get you. That's that's a like, wow. It, and you did it four weeks in a row. Wow. Well, one, the third week, I went there, mm. didn't go up. Mm. Or no, it was the third or fourth week. I went there, didn't go up, and Carmen knew I was there the whole time. Mm. He felt bad. Mm. And the lady, her name was Cece. She was hosting. Mm. She said, "Hey, Cece, make sure he gets a good spot." So mm. she put me up like in a great spot. Nice. And I did good. Nice. And I was like, "Wow, so this is comedy. Mm. This is wow." And then it was, it was, the, and then the funny thing is a lot of people, even though I naturally do deadpan to my family, mm. that became my defense mechanism in comedy because mm. I felt safe there. Mm. I felt safe being low energy deadpan. Mm. I didn't feel comfortable being high energy. Mm. So I, I was like, and people were like, oh, you're confident. I'm like, no, I'm not. Mm. I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. I don't know it. I don't see ter terrifying. Uh, I'm still get scared on stage, but I hide it well. Yeah, I like when you're on stage, you're just like kind of mellow and start talking and crack some jokes. I, I like that. The pauses are fear, though. Mm. Sometimes they're some. Sometimes I take pauses to let to let me think, let them breathe. But then yeah. sometimes the pauses are me scrambling. Like I'm like, <laughs> I gotta think right now. Yeah, yeah. But you know just as well as I do, yeah. time on stage and mm. time off stage are two different times. Because mm. if you're bombing, time feels so slow. Exactly. But if you're killing, that's thing you know, you see the light and you're like, I only told four jokes. <laughs> How did this? Your, you what know, was your, your first? I wonder what was your first joke on stage? What? What did you say? My first joke? Oh my goodness off the top of my head because my <laughs> friends they 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 troll me so bad because i put my first set on youtube and i took it off because they were just relentless with messing with me but uh it wasn't my it was like the second joke i said but i was like uh god what was it it was a joke about me getting my stimulus check oh nice I don't remember where i went with that i i could i could see that's a good material to joke with it was the premise was good. Me mm. doing the joke was mm. garbage. Uh, mm. it, it was terrible. It all take practice. Like the first, I would say the first few months, I didn't get right how how do you sell the jokes, how do you narrate it. That's the thing about comedy too. I noticed uh, certain crowds you have to sell your jokes more 
than other crowds. And it's hard to explain in the sense that like, I tell people, you got to say the joke harder. Mm. And they're like, what do you mean by that? Mm. And I'm like, say it like you're truly trying to like, like say it like you have to get a laugh from this joke. Mm. Not like I'm just saying this to get somewhere. Say it like, no, I need y'all to laugh. So <laughs> sell every bit of it. Mm. it. It's hard to explain, but when you do that in certain crowds, it works mm. because open mics teach you to do that mm. because they're just not going to be as receptive as a crowd mm -hmm. that wants to see you paid money. Yep. Even if they don't know you, but they paid money to see comedy, yep. they're going to give you a lot more yeah like oh let's like let's listen to her everybody shut yeah. up you yeah. want to hear her jokes because mm -hmm. i've had some crowds where someone's heckling mm -hmm. and they're just being such a dick where everybody else is like mm -hmm. yo yo stop like mm -hmm. you'll see them in the crowd like put their hand over you, like yo stop mm -hmm. right now like mm -hmm. we're trying to hear so and uh since how long it took for you to like stop the nervousness 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 on stage like a few months it never stops it's like, always the same like I'm, it did it reduce a little it, bit it, it, it it's it's situational mm. if i'm doing an open mic i don't care mm. i don't care what i don't care if it's a new comedian he's like oh he bombed i don't care it's an open mic mm. show this free mm. i got a little bit of care mm. paid shows I, it, it all depends. Hmm. It all depends. Like, all if right. I'm watching the show and the crowd's hot, everybody's doing great, uh. people who I think are funny are doing great, people uh. who I'm like, oh, they're not that good, but they're doing, it's it's less nervousness. But, mm. like, if I'm doing a paid show mm. and the host get off stage scratching his head, <laughs> rubbing his chest, like, That's true. I don't know, man. That is true. And then it, it's a little more nervousness because I'm on guard. True. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Or a comp. To be honest, the most nervous I ever am mm. is when I'm doing a competition mm. because it feels like now mm. I got to really sell my skills as a mm. comedian. Mm. Okay. And whereas a crowd, it, it's, again, it depends. I've only done a handful of shows where they paid money and mm. they're still rough where you're like, I got to go up there and really, yeah. really put some work in. Yeah. Have you done shows in Vero Beach? Do they have shows there? I have not, and that's my fault. Mm. That's 100% my fault, because mm. I know the people to hit up to get on uh, the Comedy Zone. I know three people I could mm. hit up right now mm. to get on there, but mm. that's my that's my biggest issue in comedy yeah. is that I'm kind of stupid, and I say that because, like, I know what to do, mm. but I don't do it mm. until the pressure's on me, where it's like mm. I have a week where I'm not getting shows. Mm. I'll hit up as many people as I can, mm. and then book my whole schedule for the next two three weeks mm. but then won't just keep that up because mm. once you, you mm. once you kill and, and they know you're funny you have a lot of leeway of doing bad at one show because they, mm -hmm. they're gonna look at you like mm -hmm. oh that was a fluke mm -hmm. she done 10 shows with me she's bombed at one that's a fluke mm -hmm. everybody misses a shot once yeah so that that's how i really look at it but I, I would love to like try more down the coast because I felt like by the coast people are easier to entertain than um, Central Florida. I I would say Central Florida is the hardest crowd. Well, I've been uh, I lived in this state my whole life. Uh, my granddad, he's a great great grandfather. He's taken me up and down the state, family vacations, just hanging with him. And to be to be honest. Outside of Orlando, mm -hmm. there's not much to do in Florida. Mm -hmm. In the sense that if you don't like nature, if you mm -hmm. don't like fishing, yeah, I really don't see why people would visit Florida outside of going to Orlando, going to Miami Beach, mm -hmm. maybe maybe Naples mm -hmm. because that is a very beautiful area of Florida. Maybe mm -hmm. the Everglades, Natural Springs, but outside of that, I can't really. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do. So with comedy. Mm -hmm. Especially on the East Coast, between Coco and Melbourne, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how well the shows work. Mm. Especially in New Smyrna. Daytona's mm. a little weird because of drugs, mm. but Daytona's always, I've never had a bad time in Daytona. Mm. That's, that's true. At a show. Mm. At a show. I got to put that in. At a mic, yes, at terrible times. Mm. The show's different. Yeah, um, I went to Daytona once and the host was really great and he put me on the show immediately so i felt like 
going to different places really give you more chances, you know. But I, I, I guess I get, got one show. That's the time with you in Orlando. That's the shit sandwich. That's the only time I, I ever got minutes um, as a show. I'm gonna be honest. You could definitely get on more shows. Yeah, uh, I did. I, I'm. I already got two shows this this yeah, week, and and I already got competition lined up and another show. So that's a lot better than last month because I didn't. I didn't get. I got one guest spot last month. So. It's a, a lot of it too is hitting people up. Like mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna be honest. The the some of the comedians I hang out with who they post every month how many shows they got in the month. Yeah. I talk to them straight up and they mm-hmm. tell me they hit they're in people's yeah. DMs, yeah. emails constantly. Mhm. And it, it is just the uh one one good friend, Rob, shout out to Rob. I'm shouting out a lot of comedians. Mm-hmm. He is an amazing person because he will tell you who to hit up, mm-hmm. tell you who to email mm-hmm. and give you a template, be mm-hmm. like, "Hey, fill this out." Wow. This. He 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 really does try to help people. Wow. And it's it's not that it's really it's really us as comedians because once you're funny mm-hmm. in Orlando, yeah. you can branch out because Orlando mm-hmm. has rough crowds. I'm it's, sorry. I'm sorry. It's very very rough. Like you're fighting for as a comedian yeah. in Orlando, you're fighting for your life. Yeah. To to make sure these <laughs> jokes work. I I'm telling you, yeah. I only have one good time. That's in uh, Bon Bush. That's the only mic that I had like a crazy. That's good why. Set. But also tell people. Like, you got to read the mic where it's like, mm. let's say you do a mic and mm. you only get two or three jokes to work. Mm. Maybe them jokes, like, are, like, like I break it down like this. If I do a mic and only three jokes work, mm-hmm. but they're brand new jokes, mm-hmm. I still keep them jokes. Mm. But, and even if the stuff that didn't work mm-hmm. doesn't work, I put it in the back burner, especially if it's older jokes that I've done before. Then I'll come back to them and see how I can work them into material once I get better as a comedian. How to book shows. So we start at open mics, then people kind of hit you up. When's your first booked show? Is Did someone invite you? E, my first show. Oh, that's what it was. My friend Eddie K, mm-hmm. he put on a uh, show at Grumpy's. That was my first book show. Mm. And then I did... Uh, I think I did shit sandwich. Mm. And then uh Jolly <laughs> David Jolly, I love that man. David Jolly took me to the first <laughs> David Jolly, I'm just smiling because he's the reason I got my first applause break. Okay. I was four months into comedy. We did a show in Fort Pierce, and the best part about it was my granddad, my mom, and two of my friends that I grew up with since since like we were knee high. They were there, and I did. And the funny part about that show, I'll never forget it. I wasn't even supposed to be on the show. Mm. I begged the host to let me do time. Oh, okay. I was like, I told him, bro, I was like, bro, just give me five minutes. He was, mm-hmm. And he looked at me, he was like, are you funny? I said, bro, I'm funny for real. <laughs> like, I had to sell myself. I went on stage, did my jokes, okay. got an applause break, and it was, it was, that was that was a high I don't I won't ever forget. That is awesome. Killing in front of my parents, my my mom and my granddad, and two of my homies. Nice. So like that was that was that was that was better than weed, alcohol, <laughs> shrooms, acid, all the drugs I took. That was better than all that. <laughs> yeah, that was like. I could have had a girl hitting me up like, "Oh, come over, let's hang out." Mm. No, nah, I gotta do that show. That <laughs> that was amazing. It was every joke was hidden. I was so mm-hmm. new, and looking back, the sick part of comedy is when you look back at yourself, mm-hmm. you're like, "That set was garbage. Mm-hmm. The timing was garbage. Mm-hmm. You, the way you said it was garbage." But at the time, the crowd don't know that. Right. The crowd just know you're having fun and you're making them laugh. Yeah. But it was it was I was four months into comedy. Awesome. That was, yeah, that was that was a highlight. Definitely a highlight of the start of my comedy career. And I still know that booker. I still know that booker. Um, mm. I like him. Mm. I did another show with him. Got paid $100, did 15 minutes. Felt wow. like I bombed in front of my mom, my granddad, <laughs> and my two friends. 
And then now I got a rule now. Uh-huh. If, if you're a friend outside of comedy or you're my family member, you are not allowed to watch me do comedy. Because oh. I've been on this streak where I'm not bombing, but I do not like my sets. I don't like them. I hate it. So <laughs> if you're a family member or a, or a friend outside of comedy, you ain't never watch me do comedy unless it's a, a Netflix special, ever. <laughs> you got to watch that outside of my control. If I can control it, I'm like, you ain't not, bro. Nah, you got to walk outside while I'm on stage. How does your mom feel about you going into this career? She she honestly doesn't care. Mm. Uh, she just long long as I'm happy. Mm. Me and my mom got a great relationship. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really love my mom. Like I talk to her. I don't. I, sometimes I don't call my mom often because we will talk for two hours, <laughs> right. and I don't got the time for that sometimes. <laughs> and I, and it's like we'll we'll literally be like every thirty minutes, we'll be like, okay, I'm gonna let you go. Okay, I love you, mom, I love you. <laughs> Boom, another thirty minute conversation, and it, it, it repeats itself. And I and I'll tell her, I'm like, mom, we had a podcast. I gotta go. Right. And she understands because she's doing her things. But uh-huh. it's like, yeah, if we get to talking, we could talk for about two, three, four hours, easy. Wow. Easy. Yeah, that's like. Me and my mom are like this. This is yeah. Mm. And you're doing truck um, repair. What are you doing? I uh I just fix semi trucks. Semi. Yeah. So like, do you um, are you fixing the electric like electric or? I'm what, what you, you call a shop bitch. <laughs> I I do whatever job they tell me to do. <laughs> okay. So like they could be like, hey, do brakes, and then they could be like, hey, take that valve cover off. Hey, throw in injectors. Hey, take the fifth wheel off. Anything that doesn't, because sometimes uh, the trucks have booms, so that's oh, yeah? like hydraulic work. If it's not hydraulic work, they're like, Caleb, do this. Caleb, do that. I'm the shop bitch. <laughs> I don't have a specific thing. I just do whatever. But you, how did you get into it? Um, I went to school at UTI mm. because I was kind of mechanically inclined because uh, I never had a lot of money. Mm. And I learned really quick that mechanics, it costs a lot of money to fix your car. So mm-hmm. I just figured it out through YouTube. Mm. And I was like, you know, I'm pretty good at this. Let me mm. go to school for it. Went to school, did really well in school. Mm. And um, my job, I worked at an international dealership just washing buses. And they were like, hey, you're in school. And they knew there was this program that I could learn to specialize in engines. Mm. So they basically, they gave me money to go up there like I got money from like the school how'd that work the school work where if you graduate you don't pay nothing but if you fail you pay ten thousand dollars so mm. I, I went to the program pass mm. and my job was sending me like gift cards for like food and stuff like that mm. and they covered my uh my housing nice which was like two grand Mm. But they went with the cheapest option, so I had to live with four guys. <laughs> that kind of uh, this must not, not be that pleasant. No, nah, I'm not a violent person. Mm. Um, I thought about murder a few times. <laughs> oh, I thought about how I could get away with it too. Oh shit! Like I thought what I I had a whole man like I wrote it down what I was gonna say to the police. <laughs> I really had this shit memorized because I was gonna shoot one of them. <laughs> In the woods, it would have been probably, hey, bro, there's a fishing lake and shoot the shit out of him. But anyway, because I got it. one of them was, uh, he was 18 years old. He was 400 pounds. Oh, no. 400 pounds at 18. And How? There was this one time, I think it is often, I remember we came back home, we were so drunk. I don't, and my, <laughs> my roommate Calvin, shout out to him. This dude was the best drunk driver ever, but we got so drunk, I don't remember driving home. And we got home and we walked in and mm. I walked into the living room and our roommate was sleeping on the couch and he mm. smelled like little shit. Oh, I can't, man. I'm not exaggerating. Oh man. I thought he like, like wasted himself. Mm. So, we, so I walk into the kitchen where it don't smell like him and I'm just laughing, getting some water. And then my friend Christian walks in. He don't even live in the apartment. He walks in, walks to the kitchen. He looks at me. He's like, yo, why does Q smell like shit? <laughs> I went, I, I laugh for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> I, I did, I sw- I laugh for 15 minutes straight. It was so funny to me. And uh, 
And then I li- and then the other roommate, he was a weird kid. He would shower in the morning, go to class, go to work, go to bed. <laughs> That's it. And I would I would look at him and I'm like, mm. hey, you got that reverse. You you should shower after work mm. and then just wake up and go to school, then go to work because. Mm. You'd probably be like, but no, I remember the only time he showered before work was when he spilled cooling on himself. And uh, mm. so that was weird. My other roommate, the he, his name was Calvin. He was Indian. Mm. He had money. But uh, this fucker would be talking to his girlfriend till one in the morning. Where will you see yourself in a year or two with comedy? Um, I slowly want to go more clean. Mm. I do want to go more clean mm. because I love challenges, mm-hmm. especially creative challenges. Mm-hmm. And to me, being clean is way harder mm. because naturally I could think dark. Mm. It's easy for me to make a dark joke. It's mm-hmm. easy for me to, but being clean and funny, mm-hmm. that's a task that I want to mm. want to try to embark on. I, I don't know. I saw a very clean, boring set today i was like man like See, how do I people even want. laugh i want a clean like i don't even want it to be tied in the dirtiness i just want a clean set where people are like that was a clean joke mm. but they're dying because there's a way to do it and i mm. respect people like rob smiles can does clean comedy he's funny mm. i know i can do that too i feel like my material is not too dirty no it's, i like your material yeah, I, I, I try not to. I I didn't even talk about dating that much. I think I have one or two lines, but I don't. Well, you know, someone told me, and I don't believe them, but they said I do clean comedy because I necessarily don't cuss. I don't cu- cuss much either, yeah. But it's like, I looked at them and I was like, you you heard my jokes. There's no way they're clean. Like, they're I like, mean, I would say. <laughs> it's They're dark, but. They're dark, but it's not like filthy kind of dirty you know it's a yeah. different type of as a guy i never i always wanted to steer away from sexual mm-hmm. like dick jokes i don't yeah I, I don't say i don't like them someone makes a funny joke like that I'm yeah laugh. yeah that's i too... personally don't like to do that do you ever struggle like yes is there a moment like ah i'm kind of getting tired of it like want to take a break from comedy no if i bomb <laughs> if i bomb like three four days in a row yeah Mm. And my bombs are weird. Mm. I got to clarify that because to me, the, 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 well, the textbook definition of bombing, mm-hmm. if I really like, actually, I don't know the definition of bombing. Mm-hmm. But if I had to say what it really is, it's mm. getting minimum to no laughs. Mm. Now, to me, let's say half my jokes work. Mm-hmm. Or sixty percent of my jokes work. I bombed. I'm not feeling good with that, cause I look at it like uh, I look at it like school. I'm not gonna be happy if I get a fifty percent or a sixty. That's a D. That's mm-hmm. a D or an F. Mm-hmm. That's, you failed. You bombed. Mm-hmm. But if I do like a C or a B, where it's like seventy, eighty percent of my jokes work, mm-hmm. I'm o- I'm I'm okay emotionally. Yeah. I'm not happy. Yeah. Yeah. But if I get ninety to a hundred mm-hmm. and to me a hundred and ten hundred and twenty is like just they're laughing before the punchline yeah wow can't be can't beat that do you constantly write new jokes or you just when it whenever inspiration comes you write it down how do you um both mm. but I'm very I'm weird I don't write jokes all the time like I should because that is a muscle that you can work mentally mm. to just write jokes, write jokes, write jokes. Mm-hmm. But I do have the spontaneous moments where mm. jokes will just come to me and I'm like, yep, that's yep. it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's weird. It's weird. There's some jokes I have that I literally took a year to work on. Wow. I'll, I'll do it for a month. Mm get pissed off put it in the back burner (laughs) month later grab it out the back Mm. put it you know do it Mm, Mm. still don't like it but it's better Mm. throw it back Mm. and then i just keep doing that until i'm happy with it Mm. until it kills consistently i have a joke yeah i have like three or four jokes that i've just 
It's literally like it's kind of like making bread where you got to beat the hell out the dough multiple times and, and fold it and flip it and throw it, you know, just to make it right. But when you get it right, it's great, and, and it feels like a big accomplishment. And now you got this joke that you don't have to do all the time because mm-hmm. you've literally been working it for a year mm-hmm. to the point of this will work. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work, you guys are the problem. Because I got jokes like that. Mm-hmm. I got five jokes where if I do them mm-hmm. and I get zero laughs, mm-hmm. it's not me anymore. And right. now I'm going to. Now I'm going to hit them with the Caleb shit. Right. Now we're going off the wall crowd work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say out of pocket stuff. I may ruin the night. (laughs) That's y'all's fault. How how much material would you say you have now after two, three years? Would you say you have 30 minutes and an hour of time? I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Material that I'm happy with, 30. Okay. That's pretty good. Material that I've written in total. Yeah. I had to written at least like three or four hours in three years. Okay. But, and when I say that, I've mm. written three or four hours mm-hmm. in three years. Yeah. That is like material that I would remotely say gets a laugh. Like a little ha-ha, like a chuckle. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it's, I mean, even even as long as you've been doing it, if you mm. go through your notebook or yeah. your, your jokes in mm. your phone or your, your mentally... Mm-hmm. go through it you're gonna look at it and be like i have damn near an hour of material yeah but you're gonna be like i hate 70 percent of this <laughs> and it, it's it's a weird where you it's so weird comedy is so weird so i promise you any guy out here yeah any comedian not guy any comedian out here who's mm. been doing it five plus years yeah has over five hours of written material mm-hmm. but it's not good it'd be mm. the worst yeah, yeah it's terrible I don't know. I, I don't hate some of the jokes I did, but I I can see I make it a little bit nicer. Like, that's what I'm currently trying to work at is make the delivery a lot better. Do you feel like you're progressing a lot on delivery? Oh, and yeah. And structuring your story? Yeah. Um, The way I do comedy, mm. I kind of always been good at the delivery mm-hmm. and the setup and the pauses. Mm. What's really gotten better mm. is my crowd work. Because mm. if you met me mm. a year in, mm. I my crowd work was terrible. Mm. I had this weird crowd work where if someone heckled me, I'd just stare at them for 10 seconds <laughs> and continue my joke. Yep. <laughs> And it, it surprisingly it worked well. Yeah. But now I can attack them. I can. Mm. I have options. I know what to do with hecklers. And how it's fun. though? Did, I I am currently in the process where, after the show, I think of how to come back. But you think after a few months that happens, then you can actually come back on, on the spot. Like how do you practice that muscle? Keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, that's the best. Um, it, it's I can't really tell you how to do it. Just mm-hmm. to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Because um. You develop this muscle where mm. it's like you become more witty. Mm. So when someone says something to you, mm. and here's the thing about people mm. don't realize about crowd work, mm-hmm. you can save a funny crowd work moment and reuse it. Mm. They don't know you just, they don't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's yeah, like exactly. So certain yeah. things yeah. Mm-hmm. that happen. You can I save have, the set. Yeah, yeah I, I understand So that. it's like, it's... Mm. That's it's true. a muscle you work up where you're like, oh, I know. And then there's patterns. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I learned from uh, Donald Evans mm-hmm. and Cam Patterson. There's patterns. Yeah. Just watching them. Because mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of amateur people will go, mm. they'll, 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 they'll start bombing. And they'll be like, mm-hmm. hey, so what do you do for work? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's crazy. You're a lawyer. Mm-hmm. They don't do that. Mm-hmm. Donald and Cam watching them, mm-hmm. they don't be like, oh, what do you do for work? Mm-hmm. They'll look at them, judge what they're wearing, and be like, I bet you a construction worker mm-hmm. and then go off that. And then mm-hmm. the guy's like, oh, no, no, no. I work in an office. Mm-hmm. You work in an office? Mm-hmm. You that big? You probably breaking every pencil. Like, mm-hmm. they just go off. Of, it, it, it leads into a, mm-hmm. it's a it's a science to it. And mm-hmm. when, when I'm watching them, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of develop your own um, skill on it and your own approach on crowd work i can see that and my best approach for crowd work Mm -hmm. because i see some comedians do and i think it's stupid Mm. don't attack them Mm. there you look 
I will mm. compliment them mm. and make me the butt of the joke. Uh. Like I remember there was a there was a, a girl heckling me and she was with her man mm. and I said something to her mm. and then I immediately was like, you know what, I should stop talking for your man beat me up because this dude was bulky. Mm. And then I started complimenting him. And mm. I was like, I bet you lift every weight. I was just going off mm. on him. Mm. And then at the end of the day is I shut her up. Mm. She likes me. Yeah. Everybody's laughing. I put myself in the bad position mm. where I'm like, oh, this guy will beat me up. Mm. And then I look at someone else, like, you gonna help me if you jump across the stage. Mm. I bring people in mm. and it's just a trick to, I've, but I've, I've done this by watching comedians better than mm. me. I'm like, oh, that, even Andrew Schultz do a, a, a not like that, but mm. he has his own method of digging out funny mm. interactions between people. I just watch and learn. That is such a good approach. I, because I saw a video today and, <laughs> It was a heckler heckling a Jewish comedian, and he got pissed on the stage. And he's like, "I don't need anti-Semitism on my room. Get it the fuck out!" And that's just like can't do that. that make the room so weird. Yeah, because you lost yeah. your composure, if and now he, everybody's like, "Is this like, a joke?" Yeah, is- we're here for fun, and now it got everyone nervous. Like, if you can't laugh at yourself, don't. Yeah. You need such a big heart. But it, it's. I blame my conflict resolution because it's like it, it's, but really, but really, it's just watching better comedians than me. Because mm. I've seen better comedians than me mm. go the antagonistic route. Mm. Doesn't always work. Because mm. then you're gonna have that couple pissed off at you, mm. and you're gonna have to keep doing, uh, uh what's the word? You mm. have to keep just checking them the whole show. Mm. Whereas if you can shut them up and then still make yourself the butt of the joke mm. without too much self-deprecation. That is true. Yeah. Because no one hates you then. Mm. You, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that, that is that is so good. Yeah, you need to kind of come. Because they are your audience. They are, in a way, you're serving them. So why do you make them mad? And uh, <laughs> I love doing this. When a joke bombs, Yeah. I'll address the first person who's looking at me crazy. Mm. Like uh, I did a show recently. I did a joke bombed. Mm. And I looked at this white lady. I was like, "What? What, what did you? What did you not like about that joke, ma'am?" Oh yeah. And then she was trying to tell me, mm. and like just, just off that, just let your mind go. Mm. Whatever they say, just always have the mind where I'm like, I need to bring them back and like me. Mm. I need to bring them back and like me. Mm. And I've saved so many jokes from bombing mm. by addressing that the joke is not funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Do they I like think that. It's funny? They yeah. like it. I don't know why. When you sit there and just surrender and be like, yeah. I don't even know why I said that. That joke wasn't funny at all. <laughs> they start laughing yeah, because they, it, it's, it's a, it's, you become more human to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, it's, it's kind of a good way to like show weakness almost. You know? And makes, it, makes, you, makes you more likable. Yeah. It's, uh, just, uh, it makes them more comfortable that, I, that mm. what I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Cause I've I've done that plenty of times. Like, oh, what you didn't like about that joke? Was it too dark? I'm sorry, I ain't gonna do that again. Mm. I prom and then lie and do another dark joke, and mm. then play with people. What I love is when I'm doing a show, and there's one person who doesn't like me, mm. but they don't. They they're, they're, I can see in their face because mm. I'll address them every joke I say. Uh huh. Like there was one lady I did a show. Mm. She was just giving me the stank face. Ooh. And I was like, I was like, man, you didn't like that joke. I'm mm. sorry. I promise you, I'm not gonna say any more dark jokes. Said another dark joke, and I was like, and then she just looked at me mean again. And I was like, hey guys, she's still looking at me mean again. Wow. And then she started smiling. <laughs> and then I was like, like she was, she looked like she looked like one of them exotic white women. So I was like, I was like, I bet you do African tours to Zimbabwe to feed starving children. I bet you do. I bet you know how to throw a blow. I bet you know how to blow a blow dart. I was just going off on that, and it was working. But she did not like my comedy. I'll tell you that right now. I ain't mm. gonna like she went home and mm. talked good about me. I, uh, I, I felt the same the first time I did a guest spot in uh, Winter Haven. I felt like that crowd because oh, uh, uh, because the the headliner was LOL. yeah because the headliner was like a a mild mommy Joe kind of. Uh, type of c- comedy so i went in my jokes were hard, hard and dark and i felt like man like that wasn't fitting the room i got the energy you know so sometimes though 
you got to ease them into your bullshit. Yeah. If yeah. that makes sense. Like, mm. some crowds, you could just come out the gate, bang, 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 yeah, I'm yeah. doing this. Yeah. But some crowds, I've had to ease them in where mm. I'll say light joke, light joke. Yeah, yeah. Big, dark joke. Mm. And they'll pull back, and I'm like, whoa, mm. now, y'all didn't like that? I'm like, mm. come on now. This, mm. you, you, you play with them, and then you mm. just... It's like feeding a dog, mm. like hand feeding a dog, like mm. here, mm. here. And then you really feed them. So, mm. Or if they don't like the crowd or mm. if they don't like your dark humor, mm. you just do that until you get the light. Just hand feed them dark jokes. Mm. That is so good. And, like, it's, it's all an image, too. It, mm. It's all an image, too. Like, it's just me being a black man. People don't expect me to get on stage and just plant my feet and mm. not move mm. and just do my comedy because mm. when people and it, it's not even a racist thing it's mm. just it's just what you see on tv mm -hmm. you see black comedians more energetic mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. when they see me not doing that it throws their mental mm -hmm. thing off just it, it, it's all like mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's weird it, it's comedy such a weird thing like mm -hmm. how you like everything's weird I, I like you can be so creative about it. There's so many asses about uh, like aspect about comedy and it's so intera interactive too, like with audience and just it's a form of art. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's a weird form of art mm. because I think it's the most unappreciated mm. in the sense that if me and you are painters, people mm. can respect it. Mm. Oh he or she put a lot of energy into mm -hmm. this this is really an expression mm -hmm. even if we we're musicians mm -hmm. it's like this whole they created this or mm -hmm. they're doing a cover they had to people don't respect comedy <laughs> unless you were killing uh -huh. if you're up there and you're struggling and you had an okay set they don't yeah. really respect comedy because on that i promise you on mm -hmm. the drive home mm -hmm. they're thinking in their head mm -hmm. I could have done better mm. and the reality is they couldn't yeah yeah and, yeah. and here and here's another reality yeah. even if they went on stage and killed for their first time mm -hmm. okay go on stage 10 more times and mm. see what happens yeah that's the funny thing about comedy people mm. can go on stage one time and destroy mm. have the best set mm. ever and be like I'm the greatest comedian ever all right keep hitting mics for the next month and mm. see how good you are C come to Copper Rocket. Mm. Come go go to that mic with three people in there, and, mm. ha and, and they don't care about you. <laughs> that that's when comedy starts getting more realistic, and people mm. don't respect that because they never been they they don't see that. Mm -hmm. And then people think we magicians. They think we go on stage and just make shit up and, and be funny. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that no no this is a calculated thing that we're doing on stage. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very. Comedy is very hilarious to me because mm. I've had people come up to me and mm. ask me mm. with a straight face, did mm. you make that up as you went? Mm. And I was like, mm. you think I just made up all that joke structure at, at the top of my head? Yeah, okay. I would say I always make one or two on the spot, like for starters or beginnings, uh, but most of them is uh, thought before. But it becomes a muscle. There's... There's times where I went on stage, mm. I, had a, I had a set list. I'm going to say this, say this, mm, say this. Mm. The crowd don't want to hear jokes. So I'm mm. like, well, y'all going to get 10 minutes of me. Mm. Uncut me. And they like it. Mm -hmm. Can I do that at every show? No. Uncut me is too much for a lot of people. Because mm. I'm going to literally say what pops in my brain. Mm -hmm. And that could probably get me canceled. <laughs> I can see some of the stuff you say can really get you canceled. It's, uh, it's <laughs> I'll stop myself, though. I'll be like, I'm not going to say that. And they'll be like, say it, oh, say it. And I'm like, no. Y'all are going to get me in trouble. So what do you do besides work and comedy? Tell you, tell people a little uh, bit about yourself. Lifting weights, mm -hmm. uh, anime, yeah. like we talked about. And I like guns. Mm. Love to shoot guns. Mm. Um, that's really about it. Mm. Between work and comedy, take up a good chunk of my day. Yeah. But lifting weights is pretty fun. Mm. Um, yeah, it's fun. 
if you, if you don't do it, do it. It's fun. Hmm. Or not just lift. This exercise is fun to me. Yeah. You do got to be nicer to yourself, though. I will yeah. say that in a comedy. Hmm. It's a weird it's a weird dan- dance that you got to do where you got to you got to be hard on yourself to get better, mm-hmm. but also you got to learn to take your wins and mm. you got to give yourself a little credit like mm. if you did okay mm. and this is a shitty ass dive bar mm. ain't nobody here you 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 got you got the the homeless guy who's a regular mm. and you did okay you mm. got to kind of like mm. okay I didn't kill mm. but what worked mm. these are good mm. maybe these need work mm. maybe they don't maybe mm. I was in a shitty bar let mm. me try this place so it's like you got to you got to play around it Mm. And then again, I can't stress this enough. Orlando mm. rooms are hard. It is hard, yeah. It's, it's so discouraging. That's why I don't even do it anymore. Cam gets standing ovations in Texas. He's a great comedian. Oh, he yeah? earned his position. Okay. He came back to he came back to Orlando, did a show at Binks, walked out, was like, I'm going back to Texas. <laughs> I hate this place. I but can tell like even Cam, Tampa. Yeah. I, I love Tampa so much. I just got so so much more in Tampa than Orlando. It just I don't do it anymore, you know. I don't know. It's, it's I can get that. I, I literally I literally tell people yeah. Orlando's is is a training camp. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a training camp and mm-hmm. it's not a fun one. Mm-hmm. It's a training camp that uh you just That's why I t- like I tell new comedians, mm-hmm. I tell them, yeah. yo, yeah. you're doing good. Mm-hmm. Start branching out. Go to Tampa. Mm-hmm. Go to Melbourne. Yep. Go here. Start start getting your name out there. Because, mm-hmm. like, if you can even do okay, because I'm telling you, mm-hmm. I see a lot of garbage comedians in, in Orlando, but then I see a lot of good ones, too. There's a lot of talent yep. in, that, in, that, in that big-ass city. Yeah. Because our mics are so rough. Yeah. And if, if, you could, if you could do okay here, you could mm-hmm. take off. Because everybody who came out of Orlando who mm-hmm. moved to Austin, Texas, they're, I'm not saying they, really? they got what Cam got. Wow. But they're doing well. Okay. I, I, that they're got me interested well. to like travel a little bit. Maybe I'll stay there for a week. and. Yeah, like you don't have to move out there, but definitely yeah, you going out week. there, yeah. telling your jokes. Mm-hmm. I got friends out there who, I got three friends who are like, bro, you need to move out here. You need mm, to move out wow, here. Wow, okay. People, t- t- talk to some of the comedians mm. who came back from Texas. The Texas comics, and I don't give a damn if they hear mm. me. Y'all suck. <laughs> They they suck. There's like the ten percent of them are good. Mm. What else do you want to tell people about you? Just the last few minutes. Um, I think George Bush did nine eleven. Um, I think uh, I think that uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say that. Can't say that. Uh, I think McDonald's. Uh, I think they're in the Illuminati because why are McChickens three dollars? That's uh, blasphemy, and that's the work of Satan. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, Taco Bell. Yeah, the beefy five-layer burrito used to be nine, uh, 89 cents when I was a little boy. Why is it fucking $3? Blasphemy. That's the devil work. Devilish. Y'all going to burn in hell for making broke people spend more money than we don't have. That's crazy. Shout out to Yang. She's awesome. Very funny community. You better follow her, or I will find out where you live and do black people stuff. Yo, what's up? This is Comet Caleb right here. Please follow me at that same name on Instagram if you like my comedy. I had a great time doing the podcast. You know, I'm probably one of the funniest comedians that do dark humor and low energy in the area. So please give me a follow if you like that style. Watch me on the come up.